Recording with external microphone. System sound volume set for 100%. Hello everyone. Uh, we are back again. Uh, as you are aware, we have already discussed the theme of the poem and I have introduced it to you. I have also given the uh, difficult words and meaning meanings of those words to you. So, we take up the text of the poem now. The first stanza gives you the picture of a slum classroom. Let's see. Um, that is, it gives you a picture of the students sitting in a slum classroom. It will give you an idea what kind of children come to this, uh, the slum schools, you know. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces. So the children sitting there, their faces are contrasted with gusty waves. Gusty waves, as I told you, symbolize energy, vitality and happiness, which you usually find with children. Children are very zealous, enthusiastic, cheerful, playful, uh, energetic. But the children sitting in the slum classroom are far removed from such things as gusty waves or energy or vitality and happiness and so on. Look, like rootless weeds, their hair the hair torn round their paler. So they seem to be rootless weeds, unwanted plants, and that too, you know, the plants which are uprooted. First of all, they are unwanted. Secondly, they are uprooted. I am giving you the literal meaning first. Now, um, obviously, when you um, disconnect a plant from its root it's almost dead and in a way when we are uprooted or when we are rootless we are insecure so these children are insecure they are like rootless weeds and their faces are pale pallor you know they, they, their faces are not radiant they're not shining, they're not gleaming. So their hair are torn round their paler. Their hair are scattered in a disorderly manner all around their faces. That is, they are not like you who are well combed well-dressed, neat and clean, looking happy, full of enthusiasm in the morning in the school. That's not the case, you know. It's opposite is the case. See who are there. Number one, the tall girl with her weighed down head. So there's sitting a girl who is very tall, but her head is weighed down, W H, sorry, W E I G H, E D, weighed down. The word weighed is important. Uh, as you know, the word weight comes from the word weigh. So her head is bent, but the suggestion is that it's bent because of the weight of something, because of the pressure of something. So obviously it's the pressure of humiliation, pressure of poverty. She is feeling ashamed of her poverty because of which her head is bent. Then the next boy, the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes. There's another kid sitting there 
who is very lean and thin so lean and thin that he is compared to a paper paper seeming boy a boy who looks like a paper and he's got small eyes small terrified eyes his eyes show terror as in case of a rat look at the third one the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bone reciting a father's gnarl disease from uh, his lesson from his desk so this third unfortunate child has in fact inherited an orthopedic disease from his father his bones are twisted he is not able to stand properly in his desk and he is reciting his lesson so it appears that his lesson is his disease and not what he is reciting kyunki jo zyada obvious baat hai wo uski bimari hai uska lesson itna obvious nahi hai to dur se dekh ke use aisa lagta hai jaise wo apna lesson to pad raha hai lekin aisa lagta hai jaise ki wo apni bimari dikha raha ho now the fourth one one unnoted sweet young his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this so um there is um, another kid a small kid sitting at the back of the classroom he is very young but he is a sweet child uh however he is dreaming in fact he's lost mentally thinking of the games of squirrel's game in tree room this word room here means space game that the squirrel plays in the space made in the tree other than this other than this classroom so he is distracted from the lesson he is thinking of the games and the point is that this child is unnoted nobody has noticed it so this is just a glimpse of the kind of children that you find there in the slum classroom someone is ashamed of his poverty someone is ill fed so lean and thin that he seems like paper someone needs medical care he has inherited a disease and someone doesn't get a chance to play so such children you know i'd like to make a point here you know those who are so poor so hungry those who do not have um, enough to eat those who don't get medical care proper medical care and you know as children it is our right to play if we are not carefree enough to play to enjoy life as kids do so our personality will not develop bachon ko agar khelne ko nahi milta jaise agar aap apne bare mein soche to aapne apna bachpan enjoy kiya hai to aap padhai karne mein kamyab hue you know you have enjoyed your childhood so you have been successful now those who do not get a chance to enjoy to play you can't expect them to learn and focus on classroom activities obviously because this is natural a child is attracted to play quite naturally it's quite natural to the child and if you deny them uh, the innocent pleasures of games and um, you know uh, play things and others then his personality will remain undeveloped so you know the government of india started uh, the midday meal scheme in order to you know make the students poor students come to the school so they come to the school only for meal you know the poet will continue talking about the problems now he'll talk of the classroom itself on sour cream walls donations first of all 
the uh, walls of the classroom are described as sour cream walls mm-hmm. for two reasons uh, you see sour cream is usually yellow yellowish rotten cream so the classroom walls are yellowish dirty and foul smelling like sour cream there's no hygiene no cleanliness there and what is ironical is that the walls are decorated with donations the gifts that given by various rich people let's see what gifts shakespeare's head there's a picture of shakespeare's head shoulder and chest and cloudless at dawn there are paintings one of the painting shows cloudless sky at dawn another painting shows civilized doom riding all cities so in st- huge tall buildings institutions of the civilized world another painting shows belled flari tyrolese valley beautiful valley of tyrol in which there are flowers of the shape of bell bell shaped flowers what else open handed map huge big maps now you see this is really ironical because all these images contrast sharply with the lives of the slum children see how so the map shows the world to the slum children yet what happens and yet for these children these windows not this map their world but for these children children sitting in slum classroom what is their world their world is the slum the slum classroom and not the world that is shown in the map jo duniya ka naqsha jo duniya dikha raha hai wo unki duniya nahi hai balki unki duniya to yahi classroom dirty classroom hai ye unki world hai where all their all their futures painted with a fog all their futures painted with a fog means their future is terribly uncertain inki painting yahi hai classroom walls pe jo bhi painting lagi ho but the painting of these children is uncertainty fog where all their fu- sorry a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky so under their feet they have got a narrow street they live in narrow streets tangaliyon mein rehte hain and above their heads they've got lead sky heavy cruel sky gray sky which is cruel which becomes a burden for them and in between them they are sealed closed imprisoned far far from rivers capes and stars of words so these children are far removed from um, such enjoyable places as rivers capes and such uh, people who make tall promises or the tall promises themselves people come and make tall promises you know so um but nobody remembers them afterwards they are left as it is so this is the condition of the slum classroom and slum children i think i'll only be able to complete one stanza in this voice note one uh, i mean one more stanza so i'll have to uh, meet you in the third voice note also let's see surely shakespeare shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example the poet says that surely it is not good it is not noble to show these children the picture of shakespeare or the map you know which becomes a bad example for them 
Why? With ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. So the map of the world shows all the good things in the world like sun and ships and uh, love and all the luxurious things. And they don't have it. So in fact they are tempted, enticed to steal all those things. When we don't have a thing and if it's a luxurious thing, you know, we very, very much want to get it. And as you are aware, many of the criminal elements develop in slums. When they grow up, they try to get these things by hook or crook. And so they try to steal. Now, here keep one point in mind. Poet say, the poet says that it is not good to show them the picture of Shakespeare. Uh, it's quite right because, you know, those children who do not even have enough to eat, for them, Romeo and Juliet will make no sense. They'll be absolutely uninterested in Shakespeare's plays. And um, the world map would only tempt them to steal. Steal for what? Steal for their lives that slyly turn in cramped holes so steal for their lives and their homes are called cramped holes they are so uncomfortably small that they look like holes and their life keeps on turning slyly secretly unnoticed unnoticed by anybody anyone hardly pays attention to it and what about the movement of life? It moves from fog to endless night. So they begin with uncertainty. Fog, as I told you, is uncertainty. And night? Night may symbolize failure or death. So as they are born and brought up, they face uncertainty. And ultimately they meet their death. Nothing heroic happens in their life nothing interesting happens in their life now see on their slag heap these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones so what happens is that um, these children are so lean and thin so skinny that it seems that they are wearing skins on their bones. In fact, you can count their bones. And their bodies are called slag heap. You know, you know, um, uh, heap or piles of waste matter. And they wear spectacles you know, eyeglasses having a frame of steel which is a second hand frame obviously and the glasses are mended glasses adjusted glasses original glasses nahi hai, repaired glasses hai. so because they look like slag heaps and they're because they are so lean and thin and they are wearing um, eyeglasses so they look like bottle bits bits of broken bottle thrown on the stone isko samajh lijiye um unke jism waste matter ki tarah hain itne dubble patle ke aisa lagta hai ki unhone apne dhaanchon pe apne jism haddiyon pe khal pehan rakhi hai aur unhone chashme laga rakhe hain steel ke frame wale chashme और उसमें एडजस्टेड ग्लासेस हैं तो कुल मिला वो ऐसा लगता है जैसे कि वो यानी पत्थर पे टूटी हुई बोतलों के कांच के जो टुकड़े पड़े होते हैं वो इस तरह लगते हैं उनके ऊपर वो स्पेक्टेकल्स ऑल ऑफ देयर टाइम एंड स्पेस आर फॉगी स्लम सो वट टाइम एंड स्पेस दे हैव गॉट 
that is that are reduced to foggy slums uncertain dirty slums and the poet says so blot their maps with slums as big as doom so he gives a warning that look these slums are like a blot they are like a stain on the map of the world and as big a stain as doom yani ye slums jo hain duniya ke naqshe pe ek kalank hai aur chhota mota kalank nahi bahut bada kalank jitna hai ke doom ho yani jahannam narak it's a matter of shame for the entire world which boasts of so much of progress prosperity development and so on you know but still there exists slums and slum schools in which such conditions are prevailing really for human beings it's a matter of shame a great shame so up to now the poet has told us about what kind of children go to school slums he has also given us a pen picture of a, a slum classroom he has also pointed out that this kind of education is not going to serve purpose and told us why because they are hungry people hungry children ill fed insecure they're not going to prosper they would never learn you know they don't get chance to play and uh, so no matter what you do no matter how beautiful things you show them it will have a reverse effect on them it will tempt them to steal and your purpose will not be served now the question is what should be done then the answer is here in the next stanza unless governor inspector visitor this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs the poet here refers to three groups governor which means rulers inspectors which may refer to bureaucrats that is rulers are those who make policies bureaucrats and other officers like inspectors are those who those who implement policies and the third group of visitor which means a common man unless all of us do something for them so until that time until nothing is done until that time what will happen this map becomes their window this map refers to the slum classrooms so the slum classroom is the, their only way to progress and is their only uh, say opportunity for progress it is only window available for them window for progress but unfortunately these windows that is classroom windows they shut upon their lives like catacombs shut upon their lives means they block their progress and these classrooms in fact becomes graveyards for them graves for them so something must be done together by the entire society including the rulers the bureaucrats and inspectors and the common man everyone must make his or her contribution um, to uplift these children now he further expands he says break o oh break open till they break the town he urges all of us to break the classroom you know it is not going to serve any purpose if we do not do anything for them then the burden of slums will one day break the town itself as they grow up 
they would most probably indulge in crimes and such other um you know anti social activities you know um that uh, will take start uh, uh, will will uh, start taking things like uh, heroin cocaine etc you know kisi na kisi buri anti social habit ki aadat ho jayegi lat lag jayegi nashe mein pad jayenge ya koi aur bura बुरी एक्टिविटी में लग जाएंगे और इस तरह से टाउन पे प्रेशर बन जाएगा सो वट शुड वी डू एंड शो दीज चिल्ड्रन टू ग्रीन फील्ड दैट इज एंश्योर इकोनॉमिक प्रॉस्पेरिटी फॉर देम एंश्योर सोशल जस्टिस फॉर देम दे शुड गेट रिस्पेक्ट इन द सोसाइटी सो दैट दे कैन होल्ड ए हेड हाई एंड एज चिल्ड्रेन like other children they too can play in the green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and also give them a chance to play under the blue sky on gold sands as other children do it will be possible only if they get rid of the pressure of earning livelihood only if they do not have the worry or care or rather i um, mean tension to go to work and then you know you hota hai na ke kaam pe jaye fir ghar pahunchte hain pucha jata hai kitne paise kama ke laya hai char paise hote hain to us pe maar padti hai nahi kama ke laya to wagaira wagaira ye is tarah ki jo problems aati hain you know they should be carefree this like other children you know who don't have to care about anything you know even the parents dress them for the school when they come back from the school the food is served to them you know their things are kept in an arranged way by the parents not you know by the children themselves so uh, these slum children also uh, need this kind of environment and they can get this environment only if they have economic security and social justice social justice in fact includes economic security and what else let their tongues run naked into the books the white and green leaves open and the poet says then let them study you know let their tongues run naked that is let them study freely let them express themselves freely and study what study books the white and green leaves open the white leaf here means the printed leaves that is the printed books which we usually read then they will study the printed books also and they would study the green leaves that means they would learn from nature as well so many things a child learn from nature while playing or you know wandering around or moving or roaming around they i mean he looks at birds and other small insects animals and learns you know so these children too would learn from nature and from the written word the last line of the poem history there's whose language is the sun the point is that only those people make or create history who get a chance to play under the sun that is who are carefree enough um or rather care ridden enough you know to play under the sun yani ki jinke jinhe ke itni mohlat mil sake jin pe itna dabav na ho koi pressure na ho wo freely खेल में भी इंडल्ज कर सकें और पढ़ भी सकें तो ऐसे ही लोग तारीख बनाते हैं अदरवाइज यू नो इफ यू कीप गिविंग देम एजुकेशन ओनली दैट विल बी यूजलेस बट एट द सेम टाइम इफ यू गिव ओनली इकोनॉमिक हेल्प एंड सिक्योरिटी दैट टू विल नॉट सर्व द पर्पज बिकॉज इफ दे रिमेन अनएजुकेटेड दे वॉन्ट गेट रिस्पेक्ट इन द सोसाइटी और ये जो फ़र्क है ये कंटिन्यू रहेगा चाहे कोई कितना ही अमीर हो जाए लेकिन उसको इज्जत नहीं मिलेगी क्योंकि वो पढ़ा लिखा नहीं है और उसमें मच्योरिटी नहीं आएगी सो सोशल जस्टिस एंड एजुकेशन शुड गो हैंड इन हैंड 
uh, that's the conclusion of the poem that's what the poet wants for the children of the slum now let me quickly run through the questions which i think we'll be able to answer easily number 1 asks us to tick the item which best answers the following here a the tall girl with her weighed down head uh means i'll give you the right choice there are three choices the right one has her head bent with shame then the second one the paper seeming boy with rats eyes means yes it's the second one thin hungry and weak the third the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones means you right has an inherited disability this is choice number 2 then d d point his eyes live in a dream a squirrel's game in the tree room other than this means that the boy is there are three choices the right one is the third distracted from the lesson then the faces the children's faces are compared to rootless weeds this means they are insecure there are three choices the first one is correct what do you think is the color of the sour cream well as i told you slightly yellowish why do you think the poet has used this expression to describe the classroom walls easy isn't it um, because the poet wants to show that the classroom walls are dirty and foul smelling then the walls of the classroom are decorated with pictures of shakespeare buildings with domes world map and beautiful valleys now the question is how do these contrast with the world of these children well there is a sharp contrast the the world of slum children is confined to narrow streets and a lead sky you know their futures painted with a fog that means their future is uncertain uh, all the luxurious things that the map shows all the beauty that is displayed on the wall has no meaning for these children because they are ill-fed they don't get medical care you know they are hungry they are far removed from beautiful exciting things for them the only reality are their small homes so uh, these images you know sharply contrast you can elaborate on it what does the poet want for the children of the slums how can their lives be made to change well uh, it's quite clear the poet wants that everyone should uh, give his or her contribution the policy makers the rulers the bureaucrats or the inspectors those who are in charge of implementing policies and the visitors that is the common man everyone should make a contribution and you know the children should be given economic security social justice you know social justice so that they can get rid of this um, you know stigma of poverty and uh, um they too can enjoy life like uh, other children they can get a chance to play in the green fields and on the beach uh, with the golden sands and they too should get a chance to play under the, under the sun they should only only then they should be able to they would be able to say learn from the printed books or from uh, nature you know so um, they should be rid of care and they should have as normal a life as other children have and uh, in a word uh, we can say 
that um, social justice and education should go hand in hand for them and their lives must be made to change you know how i have already elaborated it now you see we have covered this poem um in detail i have given you the meanings in the introduction the theme and i have also explained each and every stanza thoroughly if still there are doubts uh, you would find my uh, contact number in the description of the audio and uh, you can ring me and uh, take appointment and then at the appointed time i'll address your problem problems and queries now you know i may meet you for some uh, other study material also maybe the last lesson that is the first lesson in our course but for the time being i'm not sure about it let's see if it so happens i'll meet you uh, again uh, in the next voice note but for the time being i'd only say take care keep fit and fine and be happy it's goodbye from me device unlocked save button